Uh, good evening. Today I'm going to give a presentation on uh, Kurt Gödel, his incompleteness theorems, and uh, the philosophical in implications of those theorems. Uh, so who was Gödel? Uh, Gödel was a logician, mathematician, and analytic philosopher. So he was relatively uh, unknown until 1931 when he came out with his groundbreaking uh, incompleteness theorems. And soon after that, uh, the World War II struck and uh, struck, and he moved to Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton. Uh, and took a permanent position there. He was al also good friends with Albert Einstein. And so soon after he moved to Princeton, he actually formally went into philosophy of mathematics. Before that, his incompleteness theorems, for instance, did speak about uh, philosophy in some sense. They had philosophical implications, but they were mathematical results. But uh, only when he moved to Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton did he actually formally move to uh, philosophy of mathematics. Um, so in order to understand Gödel's uh, incompleteness theorems, we need to look at some, we need to uh, get a basic understanding of how mathematics works. So mathematics starts with a point uh, where you take in some uh, statements, you consider some statements that are self-evident truths, for example, and these these self-evident truths are called axioms. For example, if you give given two, two points, you can draw a line uh, joining them. That's Euclid's, one of Euclid's five axioms of geometry. So these statements are taken to be uh, truths without proof, and from them you start deriving, uh, you, you logically deduce other things, other statements. So that's how you uh, uh, prove theorems. Uh, and so there's a starting po point of axioms and uh, you develop from those axioms. So, um, uh, so this way you realize that mathematics is not unique in the sense that it starts from axioms. Uh, so you could have started from a different set of axioms and, and developed uh, your own set of logical deductions and uh, proved new statements. So ma mathematics is not unique in that sense. You can have met many mathematical uh, systems, but once a mathematical system is given proven truth in that system, it, it remains, it does not uh, change. So, but once we talk, and now once we talk about mathematical systems, we need to talk about the properties of mathematical systems called uh, consistency and completeness. So consistency is this idea that uh, if you prove, if you start from axioms and you, and you make a deduction that uh, A exists using those axioms, uh, you show a proof uh, of existence of A. You should not be able to show within that same mathematical system that not of A is also true. So contradictions just should not be existing in your system. Same way, uh, in, uh, same way, completeness is this property that every statement that we know that is true should be able to uh, should be uh, able to um, we should be able to prove it. Uh, so, for example, Goldbach conjecture. It's it's a conjecture about prime about numbers, which says that uh, every even number greater than two can be um, is, is a sum of two prime numbers. So this statement is taken to be true, uh, but the proof for this does not exist. But we believe that every statement that is uh, true uh, must be provable. And so these two things are desirable, right? You need, you would like mathematics to be rigorous and consistent, and also not, uh, and, and also describe your universe and your, your nature around you. So these two properties are desirable, but um, Gödel's incompleteness theorems uh, uh, broke that, um, a dream of a lot of people. And uh, so the, here I'd like to like first read them out. Any consistent formal system within which a certain amount of elementary mathematics can be carried out is incomplete. That is, there are statements of language of F which can neither be proved or disproved in F. So th this is basically saying that if you take an axiom set and you start logically deducing theorems from that, there's always going to be a statement that you cannot prove within that system. For example, now, um, Take for instance Goldbach's conjecture, which I just mentioned. Uh, it's possible that uh, mathematicians are just looking for the proof of this conjecture in vain, and they might not ever find it because. Uh, and this theorem is a proof for that. Like sometimes uh, you might be working in that system, and you may not be able to prove Goldbach's conjecture in that own that same system. So uh, this is sort of a this is sort of this sort of hampers the foundations of mathematics. Soon after, he gave the second incompleteness theorem, which says that assume f is a consistent formalized system which contains elementary arithmetic. Then f cannot prove the consistency of f. So if you're working in uh, in an axiom set, set, say a, and from axiom set a you derive some conclusions, and you you just you just you like the conclusions, you're happy with them, but then uh, you cannot be very, very sure about them because you cannot be the sure, you cannot be sure about your system itself. 
you might you cannot show from your system that your system is consistent you might have contradictions you cannot give a proof that there are no contradictions in my system and it's the same systems and that has happened in the past for example church rosser church and rosser came out with uh, their own mathematical systems and proved beautiful results in those systems but then soon after those systems ran uh, into contradictions um so uh, so main uh, philosophical uh, Uh, damage was done to the mathematical society in the sense and and especially uh, this this uh, mathematician called david hilbert so hilbert was a very famous mathematician and his aim was that we write down all of mathematics all of mathematics axioms into one in in one paper um and we derive all of and we should be able to rigorously derive every truth from that that was his dream and he set out to define some problems one of which was that prove that axioms of arithmetic are consistent arithmetic are consistent so he wanted to show those axioms uh, that exist are consistent and you can prove everything uh, you can prove every truth from that but gödel's uh, theorems uh, sort of shattered that dream of his and hilbert's program was basically had come to a dead end after that um so that basically changed the philosophy of which with which a lot of mathematicians worked that okay a truth that that means i can prove it uh, there's always a gap got to show that there's a gap between the between truth and uh, and devising a proof for that um so this leads to a lot of other philosophical ideas like uh, mathematical platonism which says that mathematical objects exist independent of the human minds so now once there are statements that you cannot prove so uh, that you cannot prove but are true um which which godel students assert this that there are two statements that you cannot prove so then then isn't it isn't it possible that is isn't it uh, does it does it not allude to the idea that mathematical objects exist independent of human minds if human minds created mathematics they should be able to devise a proof for it but now we have shown that you cannot prove every true statement uh so in that sense mathematical objects exist independent of human minds that one of that's one of the philosophical idea that emerges from gödel's theorems um and uh, there's another very uh, interesting deduction made from uh, not a deduction but like uh, it's just it's it's people talk about it that and they they say that incompleteness theorem support the existence of god uh, we are barred from the ultimate knowledge from the ultimate explanation by the very rules of reasoning that prompt us to seek an explanation in the first place and the only way uh, only possible way of avowing an unprovable truth mathematical or otherwise is to accept it as an article of faith so this uh, the gödel theorem uh, point to existence of something that is higher than us and people say that this hints towards god so a lot of uh, gödel's work was uh, revolving around this idea of god he also gave an ontological proof that uh, proved the existence of god he he was born and brought up in a very theistic environment and he was always motivated like that so he did uh, so although they were not intended to uh, deduce that god exists incompleteness theorems or uh, sure do hint towards that um so uh after so gödel soon died uh, in, died in 1978 due to ma- malnutrition and, and inanition caused by personality disturbance so basically what happened was his his uh, he his wife fell sick and went to the to the hospital for 6 months he was hospitalized and he did not trust anybody else to give him food so he did not eat and he passed away uh, because of lack of food and uh, of malnutrition he weighed only 20 kg or something when he died and uh, so yeah strange way for someone to die but yeah that's what happened and soon after that people still recognize his his results and um, yeah mathematicians always work in the sphere of gödel's uh, uh, results and because they might be working in vain they you never know like tomorrow someone might come and uh, show that uh, uh no you know this axiomatic set we're working with is inconsistent so and or maybe is that okay you cannot prove this system you've been uh, this this theorem you've been working uh, f- uh working on for so many years you cannot prove within this uh within this axiomatic systems but they are on to daily life mathematic math- mathematicians ignore um gödel's theorems and they are more of philosophical nature than mathematical nature of uh, in today's uh world um so yeah and i last year went to vienna and uh, and since i am very inspired by gödel i went to his, uh, his so vienna is a place where he was born and he spent his time youth, youth uh, there and he stayed at different places in vienna so those are the plates of uh, 
girdle stations at at Vienna, and I took those pictures of him at different pictures of these plates at different uh, spots in Vienna. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, thank you. That's that's it from my side.